Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Wednesday, it is September 28th. So thanks for being here this morning. Hope you're doing great. I've got my morning cup of tea. This morning I have um, my lemon ginger, which is one of my favorites. And I hope you've got a cup of tea or coffee. Just get settled, relax, and um, yeah, tell a friend about 60 and Me uh, mornings. I, you know, I, I remind you every day to do this, but I seriously, I'm so uh, happy that more people are joining us. The conversations are getting to be really interesting and dynamic, engaged. We really do have an incredible community of women. And so tell a friend, introduce them to what we're doing here. And um, I think it'd be great to make this a bigger party than it already is. So thanks again for being here. Now, I'm gonna bring you up to speed on some news from the rest of the world and also share some stories with you that might be of interest um, as you get on with your middle of your week. Don't you find Wednesday's kind of an interesting day? It's kind of right in the middle of the week. It's got a, a kind of neutrality <laughs> about it. and. Uh, uh, I actually like Wednesdays. I was born on a Wednesday. How about you? Do you know what day you were born on? I think there's supposed to be some significance about the day of the of the week that you're born on, but I'm a Wednesday, Wednesday girl. But anyway, today, by the way, is Tourism Day. It's one of my favorite days of the year because it celebrates all the wonderful people in the tourism business. I have a really good friend called Veena. She lives in India and in Jaipur. And I don't know whether she's listening today, but hi, Veena, if you're there. Uh, she is a tour guide in Rajasthan one of the few women actually. And uh, I know so many people in the travel business, they just have a passion for sharing uh, their, their, their love of travel with the world. And so this is a day to get out there, go somewhere different, even if it's just jumping on a bus and going to the next uh, little town or, or just in, into town, just do something that um, inspires you today to, to move and explore a new place. So it's International Tourism Day. Good, good day to celebrate. Now, um, let's talk about the news. Um, in Israel, um, former Israeli President uh, Shimon Peres died last night at the age of 93. He was uh, suffering after having um, had a stroke. And um, he was an amazing man. He's being remembered today for all the very positive things he did. I mean, he was basically one of the, the, the founders of the State of Israel. And throughout all the years, uh, he served in, pol in politics for 50 years. Um, he was the defense minister, I think prime minister a couple of times. But he really had a passion for his country and also for peace. He was a man of peace and uh, often controversial though, he, he did um, always put that as a priority. He met with um, uh, the Palestinian leaders uh, several times and with the Pope to try to establish a tone of, of um, settlement and peace, but um, unfortunately he didn't achieve that in his lifetime. But he was a very um, interesting man. He lived to be, I said, 93, and he said that optimism was his key to, to long life. And I think you have to be, in, as a politician, it must be very, very difficult. But anyway, let's uh, remember and celebrate the life of Shimon Perez in Israel. Now, in, um, in Mexico, interesting story here. Um, the first baby has been born using the DNA of three people. This has been a very controversial um, uh, practice. It's actually banned in the United States. But this little um, baby boy, he's five months old now, was born. Basically what it involves is having the, the egg of the mother who has some um, deficiency, some ge genetic um, deficiency. Um, and, the, the, and the egg of a healthy woman who does not have that, um, ge that genetic um, problem mixed with the sperm of the father. So there's a mother, a father, and then a second woman with a with a an egg that is mutated with the with the first one. So it's an interesting process of uh, taking this particular woman is Jordanian. She had had four miscarriages and lost two children. And it, the reason why she has um, some uh, deficiency in one of her genes that had you know had a mutation that caused um, that was a fatal. Um, um, uh, error, and so they get they perform this um, uh, this um, technique, and the little boy was born, and hopefully he's going to be fine. But um, it really it kind of in a way heralds a new way of looking at medicine, and some people call it designer children, where you you know you're getting exactly what you want um, from a, from a child by you know pushing the boundaries. But this one is really um, based on the health of the mother and the viability of of her giving birth to a you know healthy child. So that's in the baby's being looked after in uh, for now in Mexico, as I said, because it's. Not 
not legal in the United States to do this um, this technique. But anyway, it's interesting to see how that's all going to unfold over the years. Many things will be developing, I'm sure. I um, just wanted to mention a, a story from a place that you may not even know where it is, um, from Mali. Now, Mali is West African country. Um, it was in the news a couple of years ago because an Islamic uh, terrorist group destroyed um, a lot of the buildings in, in Timbuktu, which is their capital city. And uh, the person who was responsible for leading this stamp, giving this damage, um, was actually arrested and put on trial. He went through a great um, um, period of remorse and apology, and uh, he he actually um, said he was guilty and was you know was expecting a jail term, which he got. So yesterday they, they jailed him for nine years for doing damage to these um, these archaic, beautiful statues and um, you know structures in 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 uh, Timbuktu. Now the thing that's interesting about this is that the first time that an actual cultural heritage site has been considered uh, an act of, um, you know, a war crime. And he was, you know, jailed because of the damage to those very precious uh, cultural heritage sites. And it's the first time that's ever happened. So it's kind of an interesting story. And um, obviously one uh, that, you know, this person is now having to pay for, but um, it's been reconstructed. And I think, it, I've never been to Mali, but uh, apparently it's, it's looking okay and everything has been established as it was. So that's a good story from, from Africa. Now, um, there's a story I just read yesterday which surprised me about pollution. You know, I'm a big uh, fan of sustainability and um, you know, getting our, our planet back to some kind of normalcy with the, the, what we're doing to it with our uh, pollutants. But it turns out, according to this uh, survey by the World Health, uh, Health Organization, that nine out of 10 people breathe bad quality air in the world. Nine out of 10 people. So 90% of the world is breathing air that is not good for them. And um, they've done, you know, they have various ways now of measuring this. And there was a, a story yesterday in Paris where Paris often is one of the most polluted cities in the world. I think it's because of its, its um, ge geography. But uh, they show these particles that are in the air that are, are bad for the human body. And you can see the you know, day to day the different um, effect it has on, on the on the atmosphere so you know it's basically big cities that are really struggling with pollution but apparently in rural areas there's also problems so it's a worldwide issue and um, hopefully you're in that one percent or close to the one percent that's breathing good air but lots of work to be done in that area but that's how science and technology is helping us to identify the problem so I would like now to switch gears a little bit you know, um, I am, I'm a fan of celebrities and I'm not a fan of celebrities. I'm not a fan of celebrity, <laughs> but I do like some of the women in, our, in their 60s and 70s who are doing awesome things in the movie industry and also just living their lives in ways that we can um, not emulate, but we can respect and maybe learn from. So I found one person today that I, I like to just feature. And just it just goes to show though how kind of in quotes normal <laughs> some of these people are and how much they they live a life that um, very much like you and I you know trying to establish healthy uh, healthy aging regime. So the person today is uh, Jane Seymour. Now Jane Seymour is 65, and um, she, I, I've been a fan of her. She's beautiful, and she's she's always in my mind been a very natural, feminine, beautiful woman with a strong mind and also a lot of talent. She was one of the James Bond girls. Uh, she was in with Roger Moore in 1973. She uh, played in I think Live and Let Die, and then she went on to do all kinds of things with uh, TV. And she's probably known pretty well for um, what was it, Doctor um, Quinn, the medicine woman. And she did very well with that, and you know, just it just created a little bit of a following. But they, she was interviewed recently um, on TV and just said a few things that might inspire us. She said basically she um, has well, she says she does try to keep a natural face. She doesn't use Botox or any of those chemicals because as an actress, she's got to show her expression, and uh, you know, the wrinkles are there when you smile, you, they they come. <laughs> And um, she, uh, but also she did say she had, um, what did she call it, um, an eye lift, 
an eye lift 10 years ago. Now, I don't know exactly what an eye lift involves, but so she admits, you know, she's being honest that she did actually do something uh, to improve, in her opinion, her, her appearance. So she's a real woman. I like that. Um, she says that she has a very healthy um, ve a diet with vegetables, uh, fish and chicken. She actually has a farm or a home with lots of um, place to grow her own vegetables. And she eats, um, let's see, she eats ginger, apples, carrots, kale, big fan of kale, and blackberries. So she's eating all the right things according to the reports that I've read. And she also, um, she grows her own food and she has her own chickens as well. So I think that's a really uh, positive thing that, you know, to establish that kind of lifestyle. She works out and she, uses, uh, she does Pilates and also something called gyrotronics. Now I have never heard of this, but apparently it's called yoga for dancers. And I'm not sure, I think it uses a mat and like a platform, but is anybody doing gyrotronics in our community? <laughs> I'd love to know more about it, but um, Jean Seymour's a fan and that's her, uh, her thing. She has some secret passions. Um, one is that she doesn't eat a lot of dessert not like you and I, like me particularly, but she um, she does use, um, have chocolate. She loves dark chocolate and she eats that probably every day, she said she loves it. And in terms of her life philosophy with, with med medicine and health, she says she um, combines alternative and um, mainstream medicine. Her sister's a um, um, homeopathy expert and so I think she uh, learned from her. She also has been very involved in, uh, she's written um, some forewords to a book about homeopathy and um, she's open-minded about her health and I think that's probably a good thing too. So I just, I mean, maybe that's a question we can chat about here is, you know, what kind of um, lifestyle do you have, have you established for a healthy, healthy lifestyle? Just put your comments below. And by the way, you don't have to ever wait to leave your comments. Just as we're talking, just, um, you know, just write down right now what, you, what you're thinking, what your, uh, what your thoughts are about uh, Jane Seymour's healthy eating regime, healthy living regime. It's not just uh, eating, it's living. And uh, I would like to then now close with an, a related subject about knowing yourself um, as it relates to style. This is an article I've, I wanted to talk about for a while because I did something a few years ago that really did change the way I looked at my own personal style. And um, it was to, um, I was reading a book that suggested you give yourself two words that describe your style, your, your dress style, how you dress. And then it said when you've established that and you really know yourself, then apply those two words or three words to, to everything you do. You know, does your does your home re, um, resonate with those with the way you've defined your style? You know, the the places you go, the people that you meet, and and um, you know, and be friends with. Those, those just determining those words defines your life, who you are. And uh, so I thought that's kind of fun. And um, I think there's obviously a big myth that women in their sixties don't want to look good. We don't really care about fashion. So, uh, but a lot of us do. And um, I think that's where you start. So what are the words that you would use that would describe your fashion style? I'll give you a second to think. Because it's important that we start there. Now for me, I chose two words and that was, um, my two words were cultured, bohemian. And the reason, well, obviously, they're they're clear. The words are clear. I love cultured clothing. I like wearing pearls. I like um, I like classic designs, nice quality fabric if I can afford it. <laughs> and I, but I like a, I have a classic style. But also, I love bohemian fashion. You know, I wear interesting scarves and, and accessories. I often wear funky jewelry, and I have a bohemian um, nature too. I, I like the eclectic in art, in music. So that's my two words. So with those two words, I think you can then start um, establishing like your self-knowledge, like who you are. And the one way that you, could, you actually could determine those words is ask a friend. You just ask a girlfriend or, or, or your husband. What are two words they would use to describe your fashion style? And see if it aligns. <laughs> I think that's really an interesting exercise because then you can pull together um, a wardrobe or accessories that resonate, that, um, that announce those two or three words to the world. And I just think it really helps you to make choices. It also helps you to downsize because you can go to your closet and say, you know, that doesn't look very, whatever, romantic, um, you know, casual. That doesn't look very, whatever the words are. Um, and then you can start simplifying. 
So I think that's really cool. Now, I hope that's been a good exercise for the day. And write your comments below. What are the three, or two or three words that you would um, that you would use to describe your style? And not necessarily your fashion style, but you're just your style. And now, I want to talk about our another thing that goes with style is makeup because you know whether you wear it or not, some people like it. Uh, I do. Some people don't really think it's necessary anymore but um, I wanted to uh, have this little gift from yesterday it's a heated eyelash curler and um, I've chosen someone to receive this little gift and her name is Diane Watson now Diane um, I hope you enjoy this I'd love to know how you get on with it maybe you can leave me a comment uh, as to you know how you how it worked for you but uh, that's our, our, our gift of the day now um, again, I would like to just thank you all for being here. Thanks for your support. Uh, if you have got someone you'd like to share Mornings with 60 and Me with, please do that for me today. Just uh, go up to 60andme.com forward slash mornings and then you get the news first every day. But I do hope you have a great day today. Um, I hope a great Wednesday. Do something special for yourself. Um, take a little journey somewhere and, uh, and just, and just you know, enjoy the day. And I would like to leave you with a question. And that is, what, what are your two or three words that describe your personal style? I'm really looking forward to reading your answers. What, is, what are two or three words that describe your personal style? And we can have a conversation. And I really look forward to seeing you all back here tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Take good care, everyone. Bye-bye for now.